So let's talk about software. Let's look at software, but specifically two kinds of software, okay? We're going to divide software up into two areas, system software and application software. And these all are software. Let's have a look. Oh, look, they went together. That's great. Let's have a look at system software. We are talking about working with computers and computer applications. So let's have a look. Here we have a whole whack of icons, all right? So let's have a look at this one. Does this one look familiar? It should, it's Windows, you should be using it. What about this one? That is the Mac, that is OS X or OS X. Here's one that a lot of people don't know, and I don't know why that is, but this is a very popular open source operating system called Ubuntu. Ubuntu is what Mark Shuttleworth, a South African entrepreneur, actually started. iOS, that is a mobile operating system. That's Apple's, or the Apple Mac, that's the operating system for mobile devices. So their um, iPhones, for example. Android, who owns Android? Google does. Google owns a lot of stuff. So Google owns Android, and we have a lot of operating systems that run on mobile phones that are made by, sorry, run by Android. This little guy, I want you to find out who that is, okay? What that is. That is a very, very important, again, open source operating system. And uh, I want to see who the first person is going to be to find that out, okay? So here you can see we have these three at the top here. These are desktop operating systems. These are for desktops. These two over here are for mobile operating systems. And this one, I want you to find out what he does. I think I just, it looked like I rubbed his belly. <laughs> that was so weird. Okay, applications. Application software. We've looked at system software, let's look at application software. Well, application software is just stuff that we use to do things, okay? So here's some of the, the products from the Microsoft Office Suite. Word, Excel, PowerPoint, OneNote, Outlook. Does this one look familiar? That is VLC. Excellent open source of video and audio platform. Audacity, great program for recording and editing video, video, audio files, please, audio files, not video. Spotify, if you like listening to a lot of music. WhatsApp for communication. The Windows Store icon for downloading various Windows 10 applications. So let's break that down further into what system application system software does and what application software does okay so when we as computer applications technology students talk about the system software we're going to start thinking primarily about the operating system the operating system of a device or a computer it's the interface now what does interface mean interface is how you engage with something how you operate something that's why it's called an operating system because we operate the system we interface with a system using the os okay the platform of that thing. So let's have a look at what we have here. It is the interface between the hardware, the software, and the user. You are the user. So all of these things link together, and that is the operating system, the interface between the hardware, the software, and the user. That's you. Applications. Well, that's pretty much anything that you do on a computer. So Minecraft, using Microsoft Word to create letters and certificates and CVs and stuff like that. Using Excel to do stuff to uh, spreadsheets and working with very small database type setups. It's like, so that's what uh, applications are for. Accessories. Now an accessory is something that is added on. It's an extra. It comes along with the operating system. Okay. So let's have a look at some of the operating system accessories that we get in Windows 10. The most common one that we always used to use was the calculator, the standard calculator. That's what it looks like. That's what the app icon looks like. That's what it looks like when you launch it. What is nice to know, though, is you can actually change this in this little menu here and choose all kinds of other calculators as well. There's like conversions. There's a data calculator. There's all kinds. Temperatures, you name it. It's there. It's, it's amazing. Now. The snipping tool would have been taught to you by your teachers uh, quite a lot. 
but it's actually been upgraded to what's called Snip and Sketch. So with Windows 10, they're moving away from the snipping tool. That's sort of going to be disappearing quite soon. And we're going to have Snip and Sketch. It's pretty much the same thing. Got a couple of extra things added in. But Snip and Sketch or the snipping tool is really nice to take a short uh, screenshot okay, of your screen. So whatever is on your screen or even a part of your screen, you can use the snipping tool. Here is a super cool keyboard shortcut that you should know. The window key, shift, and the letter S. The window key, shift, and the letter S. You hold those three down, and you suddenly are able to take a snipping, a snip of your screen with your mouse. Super easy, super quick. It's pretty cool. Watch, I'll even do it. Window key, shift, S. Boom. Check what happens. And I can then go ahead and select something. Let go. Done. Where did that go? That went onto the Windows clipboard, and I can now paste that into any application that I want. It's pretty cool. Paint, very common accessory. It has been around since the beginning of Windows, and it's looking, it looks almost the same as when it first started years ago. Okay, paint is a very common accessory. That's just for drawing stuff for fun. But if you want to get uh, something super cool, have a look at Paint 3D also on Windows 10. Paint 3D is absolutely awesome. Paint 3D lets you create things uh, like you would in Paint, you can draw things, but you can also convert them into 3D objects or you can insert 3D objects from an online library. It is very, very cool. Okay, so in a nutshell, that is what system software and application software is all about. And in the next lesson, I'm going to discuss system software properly and application software properly so you can just have a better idea of what it is what it means and what kind of applications we have